Incoming transmission. Picture this. A recording studio somewhere far, far away. Welcome watchers of Illusion to my Castle of Confusion on the 2nd of January 2018. I hope you all had a very, very good Christmas and a stonking new year. Hope you're all safe and you had no problems throughout the festive season. I am back for the first review of 2018 with James Pond 3. I was really hoping to get this we one out before Christmas, but unfortunately I, time was not on my side, so I thought, oh well, what better way to kick off 2018 with than James Pond 3, the final of the trilogy games that they made. Now there was a uh, sort of Olympics game they, they made with this as well, but uh, it wasn't as good. Now this was AGA only if I remember correctly, because that is what this is, and it's playing off an Amiga 1200 hard drive, and it actually says AGA on it, which is quite nice. Um, but you can see from the colours that it's not your bog standard A500 routine. Um, <coughs> excuse me if I cough a bit, I'm a bit in the middle of the flu I think or it's, at least it's on its way. But uh, nevertheless, that's not going to stop me from bringing you fine folks the uh, reviews. Now, you can see here that uh, James Pond, by the way, is a fish. Uh, in the first game, he did actually have a tail, and now he's magically grown some legs. Not quite sure what that's about. Um, but you can see you can actually hold items now. It, this, this game, I would say, is more Sonic the Hedgehog than James Pond, to be honest. Uh, it does use multiple maps on the fire buttons on the joysticks as well, which is great. Uh, one of them picks up, another one punches, and uh, you can also turbo and run really fast. I'm just going to try and figure out what I'm doing. Just bear with me a minute, it's been a long time since I've played this game. Uh, graphically, this is this is stonking. Look at it, absolutely brilliant. Uh, we are actually on the Edam planes at the moment, so everything is made of cheese, uh, which is quite cool. I like that. And um, it's very, it's like Mario and Sonic have met and had a very unfortunate baby. Um, but you can see everything's there. Facial expressions on Pond himself are cool. The animations are nice as well. Uh, even when you uh, prang him up the arse with spikes, he's uh, his face animates, which is really quite nice. Now when you've got your turbo button enabled, if you look down by the left hand side there, where my uh, character face is, followed by the five, which is the five lives, denoted there as well, energy bar by those little fishies. We've run out of one because we hit the spikes. Trying to precision point this guy up here to get that is really quite hard. But you'll see when you've got your... Uh... There we go. That was worth it. That was quite a big score. Um, you can collect moons, which is basically the sonic coins. Uh, there's secrets and all sorts of stuff you can get as well. You can attack enemies by punching them or throwing things at them as well. So you've got multiple ways of dealing with um, enemies, which again is cool. Um, like I say, animation is lovely. This is by far the best James Bond game of the series. Um, you also get some nice little nods to the original games as well. If I remember rightly, one of the levels actually contains the uh, sort of a remixed version of the original James Pond theme, which I think is actually quite nice. It's always good when games nod back to themselves or pre uh, prequels. And that's stage stage one. It's finished. It's done. It's done. It's done and dusted. And I'm still alive. Amazingly, because uh, you know what I'm like with some of these games, folks. Sometimes I'm not great at them. Sometimes I'm actually not too bad. But you know. We can't be good at everything, I guess. But yeah, the Garden of Edam has now been done, so we're going to the east of Edam now, so we're still on the cheese plains. Good luck, Pond. You get a good luck, Pond, at the start of every uh, mission as well, which I think is quite nice. A little bit of speech there. Now let's see if it's this level. It might be. Loading. I mean, music's brilliant anyway. Yep, there we go. There, that is the original James Pond theme music. Hang on a second. Yes, it's like a remixed version of the original theme tune. I think that's a really nice throwback to the original James Pond. You see there, we can punch the enemies, we can jump on their heads as well, by the way. Um, like I said, they, it's like they've taken Mario and they've taken Sonic and they've taken all the best bits associated with those games and chucked it onto the Amiga. And, you know, apart from Zool, this game is actually really quite fast. Sometimes a bit too fast for its own good. I mean, it's, it's sort of akin to Super Frog in a way as well. Uh, that you know you do tend to go a little bit too fast at times. These uh, broken stars, by the way, will replenish your health. You can also run upside down, which I think is it's quite cool. So once you've got, actually got some momentum up, 
um, you can then uh, go upside down and run like Sonic does on his hoops and stuff like that. So that, there's, there's definitely a Sonic inspiration here, and I think if they, um, I think it's quite a nice homage to Sonic and um, Mario as well. Because these blocks, look, you can multiple hit them and start and moons come out. I mean, that's that's quite nice as well. They're obviously giving a, a little bit of props there to Mario, and obviously with the speed and the way the levels are laid out, Sonic as well. There we go, going upside down. I mean, it's very smooth. You know, there's no slowdown, which is really quite nice as well. Um, Audio-wise, it's quite good. You've got the punching sound effects there. Even if you don't hit anything, you still <laughs> at it, uh, which is quite fun. Um, and, you know, it is a fun game, and it's suitable for a majority of age levels as well. I wouldn't say it's impossibly hard for the youngsters. Um, maybe take a few goes to get it right and actually, you know, position your character where you need to sometimes. But other than that, it's actually suitable for quite a lot of... Um, different age groups and abilities of gameplay. Now it's quite cool as well because I don't know if you noticed earlier but I was uh, attacking a mouse with his own grenades. I actually punched them back at him and the grenade, let's see if we can do it here, there we go, and boom. Yep. So we can kill enemies with their own weapons which is absolutely brilliant. I like that a lot. I think that's very cool. Um, for those of you who found James Pond 1 a little lacklustre, um, James Pond 2 was, was not a bad game on the Amiga. This one is the daddy of the three. Without a shadow of a doubt, I think this one really had a lot more effort put into it. Um, he even bops to the music, sort of like Robocod as well, which is nice. Um, so there are there are nods to all all of the James Bond games in the franchise, which is really nice. I like the fact he's got the uh, lightning bolt on his chest as well. That's quite cool. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just it's a shame they just didn't use the, the Cod Father. I think that might have been better than um, Operation Starfish. I just think yeah, the Cod Father. They they missed a the trick there. Uh, never mind. You get these little hints and that as well. You can have weapons which loads up with apples and you can fire those at your enemies as well. It's actually so many different ways to kill your kill your enemies that it's, you know, and as you go you'll unlock more things and your enemies will provide more things. So to get to the next level you just punch these things or jump on them and that's it, level done. So let's move on to the next level. Of James Pond 3, Operation Starfish on the Commodore Amiga A1200. Great game so far. Loving it. Um, it plays very nice on the joystick. Obviously, you don't have much choice with an Amiga because uh, very rare was it that you had the ability to use keys. Um, joysticks were all the rage back then. Um, if you were we lucky enough to have a decent one, at least. Um, one of my favourite joysticks was called The Bug, and it was by uh, Cheetah, I think. And it was brilliant. I loved my, uh, loved my bug. Sat in the palm of your hand and the joysticks by your index and your middle finger, and had a little joystick on the top. Absolutely fantastic little joystick. What was your favourite joystick of the, of the um, era? We could be talking Spectrum, Amstrad, Amiga, anything that used a joystick. What was your go-to joystick of the decade? So mine was this uh, was the Bug. Um, I think it was a quick shot. I think it was another one that was quite a good joystick to have. So yeah, what was your go-to joystick of the uh, of the gaming era that we are currently in? Um, tell me, because I'm and, and why? Tell me why. I, I quite like the pads that uh, or the joysticks had two buttons that were actually mapped as well in games, like this one is and several of the other. <laughs> oh my god! Right, is it? it's Roland Rat in his Ratmobile. Um, so yeah, this game works incredibly well. It's very quick, it's very smooth, it's well animated, the sound's very good, the music's fantastic. I can't really give this too many negatives, apart from sometimes the precision jumps are a little bit annoying and quite difficult to, to nail. So that's really my only downside to this game. It's a very minor gripe, but um, I hope you've enjoyed James Pond 3 on the Amiga, because I've certainly enjoyed playing it today. And uh, it's great to be here in 2018, where the channel hopefully will continue to grow. Thank you to all of you for keeping me going. Um, and also, hi, for new subscribers that have subscribed in the last week. It's great to have you along as well. So, hello to you guys. And, um, yeah, thanks for all your support. It does mean a lot to me, considering this channel's not monetized or anything like that. I do this from just for the uh, pure pleasure of retro gaming. And uh, bringing you guys my honest opinion of um, how I feel that games are. And uh, hopefully bring you some games that you've never heard of as well. And maybe inspire you to go out there and give some of these a try if you've never played them. Now remember, a lot of these games can be found on the internet. I can't tell you where exactly, but you can find them if you look hard enough. That's all I'm going to say. 
So anyway guys, it's been James Pond 3 on the Commodore Amiga 1200. I've been Rich, this has been the Retro Revival Show for the 2nd of January, and I will be back very soon with a brand new review. Um, peace out guys, and remember to keep it retro. I will see you guys again very soon. Bye for now!